Now I greet you in the name of the triune God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Please be seated. A great man once said that we have nothing to fear but fear itself. We all know who that man was. But I want to talk to you about fear today. But I want to talk to you very, about a very particular type of fear. I want to talk to you about a fear that takes many forms. Sometimes this fear makes us feel that we are not good enough. It makes us hesitant. We may feel that God is calling us to do something, but then we feel held back by these thoughts that we have in our mind, these often negative thoughts, these limiting thoughts, these fearful thoughts. It makes our whole life kind of negative and heavy. We can get stuck. We can get stuck because of this particular type of fear that I'm talking about. And I can just imagine that this fear probably begins Maybe through something that happened. And then it's followed by a thought, a thought in our mind. It's like we follow these thoughts in our minds and we take them as reality and we find ourselves in a dark alley, a mental, emotional dark alley. Or better yet, maybe we find ourselves in a cave where we push those thoughts, those fears and those insecurities. We push them in a cave, and we hope that nobody notices them. We hope that these secrets never get out. Because what if people knew that I wasn't good enough? What if people knew that I was ashamed of something that happened to me? I believe that this is what Jesus was dealing with in the 11th chapter of John that I read today. Because in the 10th chapter, he was in Jerusalem. And he was having a conversation with the good people of Jerusalem. He's like, hey, I, I am the good shepherd. I am going to lead my people. They're like, what do you mean you're the good shepherd? That sounds like you're saying that you're God or somebody. Are you saying you're God? Jesus said, yes. I am the son of God. And I am the Messiah. The good people of Jerusalem picked up stones and sticks and bats. They balled up their fists and they were like, we're going to kill you. And Jesus did what any intelligent person would do. He got out of there. He departed. He departed to that area where John the Baptist had been in the wilderness. And his disciples looking at him like, Jesus, you, we followed you because we wanted to be winners. We didn't follow you to run from somebody. Jesus, I gave up my family. I gave up my business. I gave up everything to follow you. And they were afraid. They were scared. They were disappointed. Like, what is it that we are doing? Why are we doing this? And Jesus looked at them with love in his eye, like, wow, how can, I, how can I educate them about what my ministry is really about? <clears throat> then he got a message that his friend, his buddy Lazarus, was dying. He needed to rush over. Jesus was like, I got it. I think Jesus wanted Lazarus to die. He stayed two days extra to make sure that Lazarus was good and dead. He wanted Lazarus to die. Then he looked at his disciples and said, you know what? Let us go to Bethany to see Lazarus now. They're like, wait a minute, Jesus. That's just a little bit outside of Jerusalem. And the last time we were in Jerusalem, we had to run out of there. They will surely kill us. Thomas said, I guess we're going to go and die now. Jesus like, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid, so you shouldn't be afraid. I'm about to show you a thing or two. And 
And I wonder, I wonder, why would Jesus let Lazarus die? Why does Jesus let us suffer? Why does Jesus let us hold on to these negative, heavy, closeted thoughts that we have? And we just stuff in that cave. Jesus went to Bethany. And the first sister ran out to him. He's like, Jesus, my brother is dying. I know if you were here, you would have stopped him. And Jesus said, don't you believe in the resurrection? She said, yes, Jesus, I believe in the resurrection. I know that on the last day, that day in the future, that day far, far away, there will be a resurrection. And I will see God. Jesus smiled with love in his eyes and said, no, no. I, I am the resurrection and I am the life. If you believe in me, you will never die. And Lazarus, even though Lazarus is dead, he shall have life. And so she was scared and confused, but very hopeful when she ran back to her sister. Then the second sister came to Jesus. And again, she said, Jesus, I know that if you were here, my brother wouldn't have died. And I can just imagine her hugging Jesus tightly and sobbing that cry that a sister cries when she loses her brother. That cry that a child cries when he loses his mother or father. And Jesus held her in that moment, and he felt her pain. And in that moment, Jesus cried with her. Jesus cried hard. He's like, let's go to the cave. And he was crying on his way to the cave. Now, Jesus was not crying out of fear. Jesus was crying out of compassion. Because when she hurt, he hurt. You see, brothers and sisters, when we are in pain, we are not alone. Jesus feels our pain with us. This is very important to know. Jesus feels our pain. Jesus is not judging us or holding things against us. Jesus is not letting things happen to us. Jesus is with us. Jesus is with us in the, in, during that entire time. Jesus wants us to know that he is with us and he is in us. And we should never be afraid when things happen in the world, it's okay to cry or have emotion out of compassion for another human being. But we ought to know that we are empowered by God. When I think about what happened in Texas, and I think about that murder at the military base, it seems as if these things happen all the time. When I think about that little girl, Alicia Rudd, my heart goes out to her. The greatest, the greatest sin that we can have is when we can become desensitized to human pain. I got a friend of mine who sits around and watches uh, this television station, and every show is about murder. Every show is about a missing person. Every show is about somebody stabbing somebody in the back. This stuff is quite entertaining. But the problem is, it desensitizes us to human pain. We take it as something that happens all the time, and we just turn off. It's so easy for us to turn off. That's not what Jesus did. Jesus felt the pain of his dear sister. What we need to do, brothers and sisters, is we need to turn on. When we see what happened at the military base, when we see our veterans with post-traumatic stress syndrome, we need to do something. We need to talk, we need to talk about this. We need to wonder why are we sending our folks over here to fight these wars with these people that with people we don't know, and they come back 
in such bad shape and don't get the, the, the resources and the treatment that they need. And why is it in a rich city like Washington, D.C., we can have a girl like Alicia Roy living in a gutter, living at the margins of society. There are dozens and hundreds of girls like this. We gotta do something about this. We have that power. We can make a difference. And I think this is what Jesus wants us to know, that we have power. And that fear, like the fear that those disciples felt, that's unnecessary. Because we have power. And our power begins with our thought. Our power begins with our thoughts. We have, every one of us will have these thoughts that run into our mind. These negative, debilitating thoughts. Now, now my high school students, they don't. See, high school students, when you're like 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 years old, probably all 15, 20, you think you can do anything. You feel invincible. You guys feel invincible? Well, I used to feel invincible. But I still feel invested. But every once in a while, one of those negative thoughts. One of those negative thoughts get in my brain and I follow it down this alley. But you know what? Those negative thoughts are not me. Those negative thoughts are not my reality. Those negative thoughts are nothing but some thoughts. And I can look at them objectively and say, that is not me. And I can see that pattern. Because I know that Jesus Christ is within me. And Jesus came so I would not be afraid so I can be an act into the world. Because you know, if you are afraid, if you live in fear, if you limit yourself, that's a perfect excuse to sit down and be passive. And that's what the enemy wants us to do, is to sit down and be passive. Jesus is teaching us something. Jesus, remember the man born blind? You guys remember the man born blind? Yes. All y'all can come to church, you see man born blind. <laughs> Now, was he born blind because he sinned or his parents? No. All right, come on now. Come on, all right, come on. I'm about to get in trouble if I'm not preaching this right. Was he born blind because of his because he sinned or because of his parents? Neither one. He was born blind to reveal the glory of God. Why did Jesus let Lazarus die? To reveal the glory of God. And let me tell you something, when I have those negative thoughts and I walk down that alley, I'm able, whenever I, get, whenever I come out of that alley, whenever I can see those negative thoughts as nothing but negative thoughts, and I can pull myself back and I can still feel invisible, that's the power of Jesus in me. And that is the revelation of the glory of God. So you high school students, y'all have negative thoughts. Let me explain something. You have negative thoughts. You know those negative thoughts are not you, right? Those are just negative thoughts. Because God has empowered them, and God has empowered all of us to be bigger than those negative thoughts. Those disciples had negative thoughts when they had to run from Jerusalem. But Jesus is like, you are bigger than that. Because you know what? The worst thing that they will ever do to you, the worst thing he, he will ever do to you is divorce you. The worst thing he will ever do to you, the worst thing that she will ever do to you is break up with you. The worst thing that they will ever do to you is fire you from your job. The worst thing that they will ever do to you is kick you out of your home. Jesus said the worst thing they will ever do to you is kill you. But I'm going to raise you up. Because if I am the resurrection. I am the truth and I am the light. Jesus wanted them to know that in this life when you are down and you are beaten up, Jesus is that resurrection that is within you. And when that ultimate thing happens, that ultimate reality of death happens, even then, even then Jesus will raise you up. And when he walked into the village and he saw his sister, she was crying, he was crying with her, he walked over to the tomb in tears. I can imagine Jesus crying hard. But he got himself together. He wiped the tears off his face. And he looked up to God and said, God, I know you always hear me. But you did this to reveal the glory that you have placed in me. Move that rock out the way. And Lazarus, 
Lazarus, come on out. And I can see Lazarus coming out with those cloths around him, around his hands. He said, unbind him. What I want you to know is those things that in your life that you have stuffed in that came somewhere with all those fears that are getting so bad that they stink. Jesus said, unbind them, open up that cave, let them out and unbind them, because Jesus has already forgiven you for that stuff. You are a conqueror. You are a winner. The power of the Holy Spirit resides in you. In the midst of my pain and my insecurities, I get down and I look to Jesus. I get down on my knees and I pray to Jesus. And Jesus always, always hears me. He doesn't hear me necessarily the way I'm anticipating, but Jesus always hears me. And Jesus always delivers me. He's not holding that thing that I'm embarrassed about. He's not holding that negative thing in my mind or that negative thing that I did. Jesus is not holding that against me. No. No, Jesus forgives me. And in that moment, I am renewed in my spirit. I have an extra spring in my step, and I can look at that negative thing that I'm holding on to. Quiet, look at this. This is how I'm holding my hand. See, this is me. I'm looking at that negative thing that's not me. Is that negative thing out there? That's not me. That's just something negative that happened. And I'm bigger than that. I'm better than that. I am filled with the Holy Spirit through the power of Jesus who came into the world so to let me know that when I'm down, that's only temporary. I'm going to be up. And when I'm suffering, that's only temporary. And even in the face of death, when I have to say goodbye to my loved ones, that death is only temporary also. Amen. Amen.